Howdy y'all, I'm around the wheel, you're watching Uncle Roundy Cracks a Pack. Target had Jumpstart available, so that's what we're doing today. This is a set I feel obligated to get one if I find it somewhere, because it's one of those where it's like, when is the last time I'm going to see this? When are these going to be gone? And there are so many great cards we're chasing in here. We're going to see what today's theme is. As you know, Jumpstart contains 20 cards. You're supposed to buy two of them and put them together into one uh, limited deck of 40 cards to just play straight out of the package. But we're only getting the one today because we just kind of care about the cards inside. And what is today's theme? This is going to be a quick video because uh, with Jumpstart, we generally only want to know what the theme is going to be. And we want to know if I'm going to be strong enough to open a pack of cards all by myself. Oh my, here we go. Okay, we've got the, we've got the pack open. The, the fun part of Jumpstart is always the reveal of the theme. You open it, it's in the nice little shrink wrap, they're all together. And today's Jumpstart pack is gonna give us whew, spell casting, which is what? Well, it's red. That's an odd. I don't think I've seen this one yet. I, I know the I know the art on the front. This is a uh, this is Kinetic Augur from Core 21, but I don't know what that means in terms of the rare. Uh, spell casting, I don't think is one I've encountered yet. It's not one of the not one of the more exciting themes, I don't think. But we'll see what it we'll see what it gives us. This is this is one I have not run into myself yet. That means that let's see, there's usually three or four, two or three different, anywhere from two to four different configurations, or one to four. Like some of the mythic themes have uh, the same cards pretty much all throughout. But with spell casting, something like this, one of the less uh, enthralling themes this could be one of a few rares this one is going to be oh it's a mythic hey okay well we'll take that this is immolating gyre what is this uh it is a jumpstart original as we can see down at the bottom it's got uh, uh 20 out of 78 there are only 78 original cards in this set immolating gyre says red red four uh, it's a sorcery. Immolating Gyre deals X damage to each creature and each planeswalker you don't control. Where X is the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. <laughs> and I like the flavor on it too. Oh, nice army you had there. <laughs> this would go great in the uh, burn deck, actually. I think I might try to find a place for it in there. Especially, you know, at this point when you have six mana out on the field with a mono red burn deck by that point you've probably cast quite a few at least instants and sorceries to make it worth your while so that can be a really scary uh nice little un uh nice little unilateral asymmetrical board wipe there i really like this card this is this is fascinating especially for somebody like me who already likes uh aggressive red stuff moving on we've got double cast from i believe this was in core 19 i remember this this was an uncommon back then too you can copy your next instant or sorcery. Not terribly exciting. I thought that was pretty cool back in the day, but there's plenty of stuff that can do that. It's not not that exciting. We've got Chandra's Pyreling, a little elemental lizard here. Whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to opponent, Chandra's Pyreling gets plus one, plus zero, and gains double strike until end of turn. Well, if you can buff it, well, yeah, you know, the non the non-combat will buff it. And with red burn, you do end up doing a lot of non-combat damage. Uh, I wonder if that stacks, though. Like, if you do non-combat damage multiple times, does Chandra's Pyroling keep getting plus one, plus zero? Like, does it just... Like, if I do non-combat damage three times in a turn before I attack, is that just going to be plus one, plus one, plus one? It looks like it's worth investigating. This could also be worth throwing in there. Uh, yeah, there's Kinetic Augur, like I said, an uncommon from Core 21, which is also the 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 card that they put on the front for the theme. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Kinetic Augur's power is equal to the number of instant sorcery cards in your graveyard. When it enters the battlefield, discard up two cards to draw that many. Not not terribly exciting. The the creatures uh, the creatures have some utility. They seem to be getting a little more useless the farther back in the pack we get. There's something on this card. Looks like maybe a Looks like maybe a bit of a spot of printing error right there. It's between its and power. It's right there. That's not a that's not a spec that I can get off the card with my finger. Oh yes, it is. Okay. Well, there was a little bit of schmutz on there. I wonder what was up with that. And then we've got crash through. From here on, it's probably not going to be 
terribly exciting stuff. But I'm excited to see what Immolating Gyre is worth. It is a card, uh, if not one of significant financial value, it is at least one of uh, great value to me personally and some of the stuff I run. Uh, Hungry Flames, that's a, what is that? Hun deals three damage to target creature and two damage to target player or planeswalker. I like those that spread it out a little bit. Those are, those can be really fun. Uh, Kiln Fiend. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Kiln Fiend gets plus three plus zero until end of turn. Yikes. Yikes on a bike. That could be really nasty if they don't have anything to block. Because uh, defensive two is not great, uh, no matter what your offense looks like. But, uh, yeah, we got the Lightning Visionary here. Oh, Thermo Alchemist. Yeah, that is great for a burn. I didn't realize that was a reprint in Jumpstart. I went... When I was building a mono red burn deck, I went for the, uh, I went for the Eldritch Moon. Uh, I think that's where this was originally printed. But yeah, <laughs> this is a great card. Don't let the common symbol there fool you. This is a great card for your mono red burn needs. Tap deals one damage to each opponent. Whenever you cast an Istra sorcery spell, untap Thermo Alchemist. Yeah, he could be really nasty. Don't let the defender or the common symbol fool you. Very nasty. We got Thriving Bluff. Of course, this is a red pack, so it comes with the red Thriving Land. Not the worst land cycle uh, where tap lands are concerned. And then I don't think I've ever seen the basic land in here. Oh, that's a cool mountain. That is a cool mountain. I like that. The colors are a little uh, washed out on camera. It looks a lot cooler to me here in person than it's going to look to you on camera. I can see kind of a difference between the colors here, like... Uh, my view of this is a lot more spectacular than y'all's is. But, man, I like those rings around that mountain. That's really cool. And then just a bunch of, you know, Core 21 lands. But we got a Mythic out of a Jumpstart pack. And it's one of the it's one of the original printing Mythics. Which, uh, I have not heard of this one. It's probably not as crazy in value as, like, say, I don't know, your Tiny Bones or your Bruvax or your, or your Emiel the Blesseds and whatnot. But... I do like this. This is pretty awesome. And I think I might have to find a home for this in my mono red commander burn deck. Well, that was a fun jumpstart pack. Join us next time. Man, but man, I have had a pretty, pretty solid run of luck lately. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm really, man, how much, how long can this train keep rolling before we hit a real slump? Cause like, man, I've just had I've had a pretty, pretty decent luck lately, I would say. See you guys next time. Uh, maybe with more Jumpstart if Target has it, because I can't, I can't stay away from the Jumpstart. They had Commander Legends too, though, and we know how, we all know how fun that's been around here.